it's an owl, chapter 7 through 12, will deal with visions relating to Gentile world powers from Babylon onwards. First one. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sums of the matter. Why is it that all throughout the book of Daniel, the years of the reign of his kings are specifically mentioned? The answer, on September 23rd, 2020, the Lord visited and asked a question. How is the study of the book going? When he was getting ready to answer, he noticed that Daniel was standing beside the Lord Jesus. The Lord said, this must not be delayed. He spoke to Daniel and looked at him. But the man of God could not hear what he was saying to him. The prophet Daniel came and sat on the sofa and said that the Lord has told him to quickly teach him and not seal up any of those secrets, especially about the last days. So he must come diligently before the Lord. This was 2020, four years ago. Why is the Lord revealing the book of Daniel now? Because the fulfillment is at hand. Therein lies another reason why I'm absolutely sure that the coming of the Lord is near. We will look at the book theologically, practically, and from a prophetic, revelatory perspective. The prophet Daniel saw a dream. The perfect definition of a dream and vision, or difference between dream and vision, is this. A dream comes while we are asleep. Visions are seen while we are awake. So, in this particular case, first, he saw a dream while he was asleep and he woke up and he continued to see a vision. And as soon as he saw everything clearly, he quickly wrote it on paper that he forget. Verse 2. And Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great See, so I saw in Aramic is when you gaze upon, imagine it comes to existence as visions becoming still and quiet with the spirit, the soul, and the mind locked in uninterrupted so that the frequencies of the heaven can flow with the revelation from God. What did he see? He saw the four winds of heaven, four spiritual forces in heaven. Ephesians 6, verse 12. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. This is the revelation that was given to the prophet. What are these four winds doing? They're striving. The Aramic is ziak, to rush forth, back and forth in agitation, always striving against itself. That is why a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. The cardinal principle of Satan is to kill, steal, and destroy. So what are they striving for? What were they striving for? They were striving for mastery. Who will be the greatest? Whenever the disciples have this problem, the Lord taught them humility. She asked, is from the primitive root, go out, means to gush forth as water to issue. Where are they striving? Over the great sea, the Mediterranean sea, the region of Mesopotamia. Sea also means people. It's about what's going to happen in this area in the last day. 
are shaking that will affect the whole world population. One example is COVID-19. It started in China and affected the entire world. Therefore, those are four wicked spiritual forces agitating to come forth to rule among the seeds of people living in the Mesopotamian region. The striving of the wind and the steering of the sea also signifies the cause and effect of the steering that will come upon the people, politics, economics, and religion. COVID-19 affected people's lives. Politicians were shaken. Religion was affected. Churches were closed. The corona was just a preview of what is to come. It's an exercise for the whole world. What to do when calamity strikes global scale? A dry run. Verse 3. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The four winds which stirred the sea gave rise to four beasts. This means that the wind did not just simply blow, and it cannot just be wind. Revelation 31 is our reference. In that particular scripture, the Apostle John stood by the beach, looking at the sea. Patmos was in the, is in the Mediterranean. As he was looking, the dragon came and stood beside him. While he was standing there, he was communicating telepathically for the beast to arise. The waters began to agitate and the beast rose up. Just like the dragon was involved here to cause the rising of the beast, the four winds that strove cannot just be winds. They are wicked spirits. These beasts are great. The Aramic for great is rab rab, means huge in size, dominating in character. Rab rab comes from rab, abundant in quantity, size, age, number, rank, and quality. So the beast that Daniel saw were powerful, domineering, great in size, and rank. And the sea signifies people and nations. We find this in Isaiah 17, verse 12 and 13, and Isaiah 56, verse 20. And it represents the four kingdoms, the lion, the leopard, the bear, and the strange beast. All are killers. All of them are the kingdoms that we saw on Nebuchadnezzar's image in Daniel chapter 2. These are warring nations who will go for war. What will they fight? be fighting for? Dominance in the Mediterranean area. Keep your eyes in that area. Iran, Iraq, and up top you have Greece and Rome. Those were the four empires that ruled that region and affected God's people. Of course, there are other kingdoms in the world, but these are the ones that ruled and affected God's people. Notice where Israel is. It's right in the mix, right there. All of this is leading up to one thing, is to annihilate and wipe Israel off the face of the earth. That's what the beast has in mind. But here's the thing, it will never happen. God is going to bring his people. God is going to restore his people. It is guaranteed. Amen. Land over there where they are, it belongs to God. Abraham marked it out. That little piece of land you see them have, that's not what was given to them. It's because of their sin. 
why they have found themselves in this situation. God was once their king. They rejected the Lord God. They asked for a king. God gave them a king who led them into apostasy. Afterward, there were 19 kings. 19 kings in Israel, 19 kings in Judah, who led them into apostasy. The Lord God has made one decision. He is going to bring them back under his kingship. No more the kingship of man. And when he does that, he's going to bring the whole earth back under his kingship. So right there in the Mesopotamian area, everything will come full circle. It started right there, and it's going to end right there. You may have learned in your history class in school that Mesopotamia was a cradle of civilization. It means that civilization started there. Well, everything is going to end there. I just want to give you, um, I don't want to make this part of the video too long. I'm just giving you a quick introduction. I'm going to take my time with this, if you don't mind. Because this is good and very good. Because the image that you saw in Nebuchadnezzar's dream is getting ready to come alive in the Mediterranean. And out of that will come the little home. The future Antichrist. From now on, I will say the future Antichrist, because as the little horn, he's not yet the Antichrist. But when he rises from the dead, then will he be. I hope you're following me, because the Lord has given us an understanding of this. And he says, seal the book no more. He was here to heal. Let him heal. Amen. Let me go to this little chart here. The four beasts represent four kingdoms. And we saw those four kingdoms in Nebuchadnezzar's tree. Daniel 2, 31 through 35. In Daniel 2, 31 through 35, in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, he saw an image. It was mighty. And exceedingly bright and frightening. In Daniel 5, Daniel's interpretation was of this was that the great God had made known to the king what shall be after this. That was in verse 45. Now, in Daniel 7, we go along. Verses 1 through 14 and verses 19 through 22. Four winds of heaven stirred the great sea. So these are four different beasts that come out of the sea. Now remember these beasts are kingdoms. Kingdoms. First was the head of gold in the book in, in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And that represented the Nebuchadnezzar as the head of gold. It was the kingdom of Babylon. And in this particular dream, as we go along, we're going to see that it, it, it is the lion with eagle's wing. The second was his chest on of silk. This was another king inferior to Babylon. It was the Medes and the Persians. In this chapter, it will be the bear with three ribs in the mouth. The third belly and thigh of bronze. This was the third kingdom of bronze that shall arise. This was Greece. And in this chapter, it will be the leopard with four heads and four wings. The fourth and the fifth. The fifth was the feet of clay and iron. They are connected. It represents the last day Roman Empire. And in this chapter, those two combined is the dreadful and terrible beast with ten horns. And we also will see 
the little horn. And finally, a stone smote the image. What does this represent? It represents the kingdom of God. This is what's going to happen. Those four kingdoms are going to rise simultaneously in the Mediterranean area. With your eyes in the Middle East. So, here it is. That which was lifeless in chapter 2 has taken on a vicious form in chapter 7. Chapters 2, chapter 7, chapter 8 is a build-up to the coming of the last kingdom upon the earth. So, in the last days, the false prophet first makes an image of the beast and forces people to worship it. Revelation 13, 12. Later, the false prophet gives life to the image and it becomes violent like a beast against those who will not worship the image by killing them, Revelation 13, 15. This is going to happen. The technology is here now. Robots are beginning to act like human beings. And there's a language out there that is called machine learning. These robots can learn how to function as a human being with this particular language. So it's like they're growing in knowledge and understanding. They're learning. And I saw a documentary the other day. The Lord led me to watch this documentary where they have robots, artificial intelligence, participating in war. They are worried about them because they are now able to make decisions on their own. On their own. That means it's going to come to a place where they will not be able to control these robots. Now, what I think is going to add to this is demons that are going to jump in this robot. So when it says here that this image is going to become violent, all of this artificial intelligence stuff is leading up to this. Plus, demons, oh, which we call aliens. They're demons masquerading as aliens. Now, let me close this out in this first part of the teaching. Godlessness will arise. Look around. If you have any kind of discernment whatsoever, you will see that happening now. When it reaches a crescendo, we will see the rise of the four beasts in the Middle East. About this time, the false prophet will arise and the Antichrist will arise. He will force the people to worship the image without retribution. Later, the false prophet will give life to the image. It will become violent and will kill all those who do not worship it. This is what is going to happen. This Mesopotamia region is where the cradle of civilization began and it will come full circle. That's where it started and that's where it will come to an end. I'm going to stop here for this for, for today. And when I come back, I'm going to continue with verse 4. You don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this. This is good and very good. Amen. So, until next time, God bless you. Bye-bye.